Good morning. Nelson Mandela once said, courage is not the absence of fear, but the overcoming of it. Brave people, he said, are not those that are not afraid, but those that have conquered their fear. At the age of 15, I participated in my first anti-apartheid protest against the inequality in the education system. As we prepared to march out of our school into the streets, we saw the police and the army waiting to pounce on us. To be honest, I was shit scared. However, we did it anyway. The slogan at the front of the march was, we want equality. By the time the slogan got to the back of the march, it was, we want a color TV. <laughs> because, because kids in white schools had color TVs and kids in black schools had no TVs. But seriously, at that moment in my life, I wanted both equally, equality as well as a color TV, but importantly, both appeared equally impossible to achieve. One of the main messages of those that oppress, that those that control, and those that benefit disproportionately from the current social order is to convince people to believe that change is impossible. The message that you got through the media, through the schooling system, and so on, was the best that you could do was inconvenience the oppressor a bit, but actually change was impossible. Today, when we look back at the apartheid system, the old world sort of just assumes, of course it was inevitable, and of course it was going to be defeated. But my dear brothers and sisters, if you lived within that system, you never thought change was possible. And the biggest challenge that we have in trying to address the challenges that humanity faces today, especially the threat of climate change, is for us to believe that, in fact, change is actually possible. But also, to understand what is at stake also calls on all of us to exhibit high levels of personal courage. And to be able to actually have a sense of courage means that you actually have to believe that, in fact, positive change is possible, that your contribution, your efforts, your sacrifice will deliver the change that is necessary, because the choice to go down the route of courageous activism against injustice means that you have to risk your reputation, you have to risk your job sometimes, you have to risk prison time, you have to sometimes put your very life on the line. And for you to have that sense of courage to make the changes that we need in the world does also require a sense of belief that change, in fact, is possible. Now, as a young person growing up in South Africa, I had the privilege of being inspired by Steve Biko, Nelson Mandela, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, and many others that inspired courage and a sense of integrity and dignity. But importantly, <coughs> No struggle in the world moves forward without the contribution of ordinary people. When my younger brother was in prison, he wrote me a letter telling me that I have come to realize that struggles for justice do not move forward because of the immense sacrifices of the few, but because of the modest sacrifices of the many. I was privileged at 15 years old, having been expelled, to have a wonderful teacher called Suri Pata, who allowed us rebel students to have meetings at her home. And while those meetings were happening, you could see her looking outside at the police and spies that were monitoring this flow of young people into her home. Knowing that that decision that she made to allow us to have those meetings in her home was, in fact, so inspiring because that could have led her to go to prison. And what she was telling us was, as a teacher and as an educator, do not let the system defeat you. Believe in your capability of change. And what she was saying through her own life 
its message was understand that we have a choice as human beings to be either part of the problem or part of the solution. And she was choosing by allowing us and encouraging us and educating us, she was choosing to be part of the system. And of course, th through much struggle, we eventually got to a point where what we saw in South Africa is what I like to call contagious courage. What we saw was Mandela's disruptive disobedience being transformed from criminality to heroism in a very short space of time. We got to a moment where, in fact, people were standing up and making sacrifices that a few years earlier we did not imagine possible. And when people started believing that change was possible, change became possible. Let me say that again. When people in large numbers started believing that change was possible, it was only then that change became possible. Now today we live in a world which we call, which we could call climate apartheid. We are facing the biggest challenge that humanity has ever faced. In fact, I would say that the challenge to address catastrophic climate change is more important and bigger than all the previous struggles that humanity has uh, faced in the past combined. And I'm talking about slavery, colonialism, um, women's right to vote, apartheid, civil rights in the United States. Combine all those struggles, and actually climate change is bigger than all of that. Why? It's not about saving the planet. I have some good news, by the way. All of you do not have to worry about saving the planet. The planet is just fine. <laughs> because if humanity continues on the path that we are, and we warm up the planet to a point that humanity cannot exist on the planet, the planet will still be here. <laughs> we will be gone. And in fact, the forests will replenish, the oceans will replenish. The planet's going to be fine. This struggle, my dear brothers and sisters, is about whether humanity can fashion a way to coexist with nature in a mutually interdependent way for centuries and centuries to come. Put differently, this struggle is about securing our children and their children's futures. And there can be nothing more important than that in every culture in the world. People have a precious way of treating our children and caring for them. So in a context where the writing now is on the wall, we have to, as the older generation, ask ourselves, are we exhibiting the right level of courage? Where are we now with the climate challenge that we face? For years, we've been having these climate negotiations where we go and we say we want a fab deal. Not a fabulous deal, but a fair, ambitious, and binding deal. And year after year, what we get is a FLAB deal, F-L-A-B, full of loopholes and bull. <laughs> and what we see is that those with power actually don't deny that we have to act on climate change now. But you can sit in a meeting with them, you can be on a panel with them where they will speak with the same passion, whether they come from government or from business, the same passion as I would speak, and then when they get back to their offices and their lives, sadly, a small thing interferes with their courage, and that is business as usual. The reality is that business as usual is not an option for us anymore. So when we look at where we are with the challenge of climate change, we must recognize that we are running out of time. Time is against us. That in fact, we are getting to a tipping point where in fact, we will soon be dealing with the reality of irreversible, runaway, catastrophic climate change. Now, I can see through the darkness some of you got very anxious looks in your eyes. And it reminds me of a woman who got up in an audience and said to me, 
after I gave a speech about the environmental collapse and how that will lead to social collapse, and she said, Dr. Naidu, have you ever heard of Martin Luther King? And I said, yes. And she said, do you know what his most favorite, famous speech was called? And I said, I have a dream, because I thought it was a trick question. And she said, yes, it was I have a dream. And when I hear you speak, it sounds like you have a nightmare. <laughs> but the challenge for those of us who are concerned about making this planet a better place is to ensure that we have the courage now to speak truth to power, to remind the world that we've had a long time to address this problem and a absence of political will has left us now with this shrinking window of opportunity and that what is needed is a much higher level of moral courage that we have seen. And what history teaches us is that just because something was legal in the doesn't mean that it was right. Apartheid was legal, colonialism was legal, slavery was le legal, denying women the right to vote was legal, and many other things were legal. But today when we look back, we say how ridiculous, how unjust, how could it ever have been? And I say to you today, the use and our dependency and our addiction on fossil fuels is legal, but history will judge it to be unjust, unsafe, unreasonable, and certainly not sustainable in terms of future gen generations. Simply put, I believe that a billion acts of courage is critically needed now for us to create a better future. And I believe now is the time for us to make that choice. Why? Three reasons. One, we have to make that choice because we do not have a choice. That, in fact, we are running out of time and that our political and business leaders must recognize urgently that nature does not negotiate, that we cannot change the science. What we can change, the only thing we can change is the political will to make the transition from an economy that's driven by dirty, brown, fossil fuel-based energy to an economy that's driven by clean, green, uh, renewable uh, energy. The second reason why we can be optimistic about the possibility of us rising to meet this challenge is that we have never had such a diverse consensus of social forces that are now standing up to say we must address climate change. We have the leader of the global trade union movement in a meeting with Ban Ki-moon saying to him, Secretary General, you might be surprised at why I am so passionate about climate change when, in fact, my job is to work for decent work and job creation. And she said, it's very simple why I, as a trade unionist, have to address it. And Sharon Burroughs said the most powerful one line I've heard in a long time, where she said, there are no jobs on a dead planet. And that is why, as a trade unionist, I have to fight climate change. And my dear brothers and sisters, we need to understand that climate change is not an environmental problem. It is a cross-cutting problem. It's a problem of the economy, of peace and security. It's a women's issue because we know that climate change is already driving up conflict, and when there is conflict and war, women and children are most disproportionately affected. So we have to understand this as a totally cross-cutting issue. There's a third reason, and the third reason is that today, even the leaders of the fossil fuel industry actually concede that climate change is a problem and that their activity is contributing to the problem. However, their willingness to change at the pace that we need them and to transition away is where the challenge absolutely remains. So, to bring it to a conclusion, I want to share with you a personal story. When I was um, in my early 20s, I was fleeing South Africa into exile, and my best friend at that time, Lenny Naidu, said to me, Kumi, what is the biggest contribution we can make to the cause of justice? And I said, that's a very simple question, giving your life, going out, getting shot and killed, becoming a martyr, which was happening every week in South Africa at that time. And Lenny said, that's the wrong answer. It's not giving your life, but giving the rest of your life. 
I was 22 years old that time. My friend Lenny was the first environmentalist I met. He was way ahead of his time, and I jokingly say that at that time he probably was only one of a thousand vegetarians on the entire African continent. <laughs> I didn't think much of it. He always used to say these philosophical things. Almost two years later, while I was in exile, I get a call that my friend Lenny and, uh, was brutally murdered by the apartheid regime. There were so many bullets in his body, it, the parents couldn't even recognize him in the mortuary. The distinction that he was making between giving your life and giving the rest of your life is critically important. He was saying that the struggle for justice, social justice, economic justice, environmental justice, gender justice, these struggles are marathons, they're not sprints. And the biggest contribution any one of us can make is to have the courage, once we understand the injustice, is to stay true to that cause until that injustice has been eliminated. So I don't want to die for any cause. I want to live for the cause of creating a more just, more sustainable, more equal, and more peaceful world. Lenny's story tells us the immense power of the courage of ordinary people. It is ordinary people throughout history that have driven extraordinary change. I believe this to have been true in the past. I believe this to be true, that ordinary people drive extraordinary change if they are empowered to have hope and courage however crazy hope might appear in certain contexts. I believe that the future depends on the choices that we make today. And the future, my dear brothers and sisters, rests with all of us that have the luxury of knowledge, that have come to understand that what is at stake here is in fact the survival of humanity on this planet, for us to summon in us a courage that has not, we have not seen in a long time. We need our religious leaders to step forward and say to the world, I jokingly say, they should remind us, that humanity has been looking in the wrong direction, rather than looking down, down, down for oil, coal, and gas. They should remind us that God gave us wind and sun up there to meet our energy needs. Uh, of course, if you use that analogy, there will be some clever person that will tell you geothermal also come from below. We need our trade union leaders and environmental leaders and business leaders to work together to actually make the changes. And I believe that all of this change is possible. It's within our grasp. And the story of the future of our world is being written now. This transition to a more just world starts with courage, and it starts with each and every one of you. Thank you very much.